He's famous. <laughs> Boys, it's a whole bunch of footage. My, you good? You good. Ready? Thumbs up. Yeah. Well, like I was talking about you earlier, 12 years ago to the day, the press conference, you were saying, with this program, you want to have practices in June, not press conferences. Well, here you are talking to us, but what does this mean? That makes me the ultimate prognosticator 12 years later, right? Is this actually probably the first June practice we've ever had in our program? But uh, yeah, that was the vision 12 years ago. Uh, it's pretty cool that you guys are reminding me of that right now because something we've never done before. So pretty cool for the company. Your players are having a little bit of fun with you, talking about the poison and not listening to the attention. But is that good in a way that that message, you hear that, that it's getting through to them? It depends on what the poison is. You know, if, <laughs> if they look, get on social media and see that everybody's favoring the Tar Heels to win this, Super Regional, that's good poison, that's good motivation. But if they read about how good they think they are, then that's bad poison. So uh, we, we don't ever get caught up in that. We just try and do what we've always done. Work hard, play hard, play with a chip on your shoulder, be the underdog, and try and do something special. What have these last few days been like for you guys, soaking in the moment, but also trying to stay present? I don't know. It's been different for me than it has been for the players. They charter everywhere they go now. I have to ride buses, but uh, it's been cool. What a, what a great experience. That's the reason I wanted to win the regional and the reason I'd love to win a super regional, for them to experience things that they've never experienced before. And our job as coaches, even as parents, is to try and create memories for these guys. And that's kind of what we're doing. And if you were to look behind you right now, you would see a scene that you haven't seen before. Look at these guys. I mean, this is out of control. How much fun they're having. Right so, but this isn't unusual for what these guys are like because as much as they give it to me, I give it right back to them. <laughs> but no, that's what we do. We just, I don't think there's a program out there that has more fun than the players at West Virginia. I really so, you didn't get on the charter, you rode the bus? I rode the bus. Why is that? I refused to pull a player. It was a 30 seat charter, and I refused to pull a player off of that charter. So, I rode the bus. I, I flew commercial back from Arizona when they chartered, and I had a three hour layover in Atlanta when they were home nestled in their beds. So, uh, this is about them right now. It'll always be about them, it always has been about them. I want them to have these experiences that I've already had. But it did look like you had a good noodle bowl, but I actually borrowed that from Sierra <laughs> just for the picture. So you guys traveled separate to Arizona too then? From Arizona. Yeah. Did you travel together to Arizona though? Or? No, flights got canceled in typical Mountaineer baseball fashion. Flights out of DFW got canceled. We had to take two different planes to Tucson, so we had to chop the team in half to get out there. But when you have problems like that, travel problems, and logistical problems, that just benefits us because that's how we've built this program, overcoming stuff like that. So when that happens, we always say advantage by me. So on the way home, all we could get was a 30-seater, so we put the players on it and one responsible adult. Uh, and on the way down here, we could only get a 30-seater, so we put the same guys on. You have a lot of baseball memories in the state of North Carolina. Can you talk about those? A ton of them. I actually just walked up to center field and was watching the ball fly off the bat, just like I did in 1986 as a player at Clemson. You know, it just looks the same when the ball comes off the bat. So I've played a lot of games here, I've coached a lot of games here. Uh, my time at uh, East Carolina, we played several games here, midweek games. And the Mountaineers have played on this field in, I think it was 2013. One of our big leaguers, John Means, came down here and threw a shutout on this field in a midweek game. So, not unfamiliar with this field at all. I have a ton of respect for Coach Forbes and what he's done here. He's a great friend, always has been. He's actually on my coaching tree. I hired Scott Forbes at East Carolina for 17 days before he came back to work with Coach Fox. And I was so happy for him because he's a Coach Fox guy. And what a perfect fit for this program. Couldn't be happier for him and the success they had. With that playing experience here, anything that you can share with your players about 
playability, outfield dimension, ball flight, things like that? Not really. They they can learn more in that session of batting practice than they can learn from me 40 years ago. The balls have changed, the bats have changed, and so have the players. So, uh, yeah, it's good to have a practice here. Outfielders are chasing balls up against the fence, and you guys see the ball coming out of the pitcher's hands. So, yeah, it's great that we can practice here. How are you guys from a health standpoint? Awesome. Cloudy to partly cloudy. Anybody, we, relievers, I know you were without several last week. Anybody we're maybe just hanging on, maybe. We're just hanging on. But this time of the year, guys do things that they don't normally do. So uh, if you're a player in this program that's never played in a Super Regional and something is bothering you, you worry about that when it gets But we're just hanging on. Maybe. You see similarities in pitching styles between Clark and Sprague, but the Carolina starter tomorrow? Yes and no. I mean, Clark is such a small guy with a huge arm. I don't know the personality of Sprague, but it wouldn't surprise me if he's that guy too. He's just really, really good. From a pitchability standpoint, yeah, it's fastball command, change up, occasional slider. So that's the same. I wouldn't be surprised if that kid gets the most out of his ability like Derek does. I'm just not around him now. So um, Coach Forbes can answer that question. On the topic of fire, obviously, so he goes Friday. What's kind of the rotation looking like for the whole week? Um, Clark. Clark. And maybe Clark. <laughs> now we're going to go with Clark and probably Swatowski in game two. kind of challenges do Carolina as the hitters present? Uh, as a coach here, if you want to get depressed, go watch the videos and the scouting report on their hitters. It's depressing how good they are. They're so physical, so competitive, so confident in this park. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. And I wouldn't want it any other way for our guys. I want them to think how tough this is going to be because that's what will motivate them. If, I, if they thought it was going to be easy, you wouldn't get the most out of them. It's going to be tough, and I want them to feel it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Coach. Thanks for having me. Hey, guys. Thanks for the time. Just need all of them. Yeah. Justin. Oh, is he still? <laughs> Come on, dude. Come on. Do you need to move over? Oh, you're I fine. You're good over. now. Okay. You good? Come on in. No, no, you're good. No, 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 you're good. Well, JJ, obviously Randy was talking about how good their uh, hitters are, but offensively in Tucson, you guys had some pretty good performances too. How can you keep that going against this pitching staff this weekend? Yeah, we definitely have to build off that. I think we use that as motivation and confidence. Um, we just got to stay loose. I mean, you know, obviously people aren't probably picking us to win, and that's that's what we want. We want to be the underdogs, so we can play more free. We're going to have a lot of fans screaming at us, and we can kind of just use that energy, uh, hopefully to our advantage, and, and just play and have fun. I mean, we had a ton of fun in Tucson. I, I'm pretty sure a bunch of those fans that were there probably thought that I was crazy and some of the team, our teammates were crazy, and we should do that again this week. That's the goal. Um, and if things don't work out right away, we should keep doing it, just be ourselves and have fun out there. So you keep in the planet of the apes craziness? For sure. Yeah, we're going to watch the, the one movie tonight as a team, which will be cool. Uh, use that to, to come into tomorrow's game. Where did that come from? Planet of the Apes, just the movie. I watched it, and I just liked the movie. So I just started being a gorilla at an inner squad and just figured, you know, going into Tucson, play some good teams, uh, teams that are ranked higher than us, picked more than us to, to win. And so I was like, you know what, we play pretty good at inner squad, so how about just treat this like an inner squad? And so I was just a gorilla all weekend. And uh, just helped some of the guys stay loose. So you started making noises and beating your chest and all the other guys did too? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. It was just, just something we had fun with and, you know, talked about the movie because a lot of people had seen the movie and just another way to be loose. What's it like being part of the first June practice in program history? Yeah, it's, it's pretty sweet. I mean, uh, I'm super thankful for it. I think, you know, since, since I've been here, we've just kind of been um, in some new strides for the past three years, which is, is unbelievable. And it just really shows that Coach Mays has building, been building this program since he's got here. And he's been building the program for this reason uh, to, to get where we are today, which is amazing. And 
it's a it's a credit to uh, his support staff and his assistants and everything that he's done here. It's just it, it's a testament to them. Um, they put us in the position to be where we are today. What if anything stuck out to you about the venue, the ballpark, you know, just being here for a couple of hours? Uh, I've been here before. I used to play travel tournaments around in the area. I was in the Carolinas a lot. I have some family from around here, so I'm pretty familiar with it. Uh, it's a nice field. I really like it. Uh, the playing surface is pretty, pretty legit. I think the dirt was really nice. Um, and you know, the ball seems to fly pretty well here. So hopefully, we can take advantage of that. JJ, um, do you guys grasp the underdog mentality or? <coughs> try to avoid thinking that you're the underdog, if that makes any sense. So how does this team approach? Uh, I mean, like, yeah, we, we know that they're ranked higher than us, obviously. We're, we're not, we weren't ranked coming into the tournament. I don't think anybody picked us to get out of Tucson. So, I mean, yeah, you can rally around that, but I mean, for the most part, we know that we're better than people think we are. So um, we can just kind of use that as motivation and just continue to play hard. How much are you guys thinking about just being potentially coaches last series or however far you guys go? It's coaches last series. Could be here, could be Omaha. Yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely something we've uh, built around it to, to use as some motivation. If we're not feeling it on a certain day, we can use that as motivation. And I mean, Skip's given everything to, to the program and to the state. He's done such a great job with that. It's it's the least that we can do is try to play hard for him. So it's definitely something we've used. Did you see Caroline's game Monday? The Edwin with LSU? Or? Not really. No. Oh, okay. Just kinda just, we had just gotten back from the play, and I was taking some time home. I know it's going to be a short travel weekend, so. I think it was probably playing video games, to be honest, just chilling. <laughs> How was the uh, experiences on the charter the past two times? It's pretty unreal. Um, we chartered one time last year, and uh, I think uh, Ren kind of got us the charter because it was looking like we were going to be uh, sole owners of the Big 12 championship, and then we had that 0-5 stretch, which was brutal. So the charter was already booked, so we took it home. And nobody, yeah, everybody was excited because, yeah, we got the charter, but nobody was feeling that great because we just got our butts kicked. But this time it felt, it felt really cool. Um, you know, we, we have a pretty tough travel schedule, and we got to go to Pittsburgh, drive an hour and a half there, then fly, then connect, fly, then touch down wherever we're going, and the same thing on the way back. So it's really taxing on the body, and the charter was pretty unbelievable. You get to just bus right up there, uh, walk onto the plane. We were on the plane for like 45 minutes and got off, and, and it kept our bodies fresh, which was awesome. Obviously, your hitting has gotten the bulk of attention, but was it kind of nice to get your fielding recognized the weekend that you had in Tucson? For sure. I mean, yeah, I had some good plays, um, you know, just trying to help the team win. I think it's something that I've put a lot of effort into. Um, I've played three different positions since I've been here, so it's kind of been, it's been cool for me to just be able to work at every single good position and try to master it. Uh, it hasn't been easy. Um, and obviously I was most comfortable with seconds where I played most of my career innings, but, you know, I think people are starting to see that I have the tools to play shortstop, and it's something that I'm just really excited to continue to work on and get better at. Good. Okay. What's the best plan in the Apes movie? Uh, I like Don. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Sorry, I bumped it. Oh, you, you, you didn't. I got a little T-Rex on, so I was going to get in there. Now, jump in the front. Just drop it. Fine. Whatever you need. Uh, whatever I need. Yeah, I'll be sticking around. It's all good. Hello. How's it going? How's it going? How's it going? How are you guys? Hey, we're in the shade now. We're good. Yeah, right? What do you see in the next few minutes? We're going to take over the range next year. You know, what will that mean? Eric, as we were kind of just talking about with JJ, this team really having fun and enjoying this time together, what has this last week, week and a half been like for you specifically? Obviously, it's been a blast just being a part of this team. Um, we kind of just knew going into the tournament that we were going to be the underdogs pretty much every every game we played in. So we we embraced that. We're going to go out there and just have as much fun as we can and just go out there and compete and whatever happens, happens. We obviously didn't get to talk to you after that game three that you went in closed things out uh, in Tucson. Just what was that experience like? And at what point did you know after a complete game on Friday that you were going back in two days later? Yeah, he told me on Friday after the game, he's like, do you think you could be ready for Sunday to come out of bullpen? I was like, I mean, I can try. So spent a lot of time with our trainer, Steve, um, Coach Oni, just trying to get the arm prepared to have only a one-day rest turnaround. But um, about the seventh inning, they told me to start go getting loose, and I thought, at that point in time, we were up 10-4, to four and I thought the game was kind of out of reach. So just started playing some catch, and some things transpired in the ninth. And it's like, you're in. So I pitched out of the bullpen this summer, so I'm pretty comfortable with it. And I mean, any time I get to go out there and get to go, it's, it's a lot of fun. You had a moment to soak in maybe the gravity of what you'll be doing tomorrow as Division Two transfer, getting the ball in game one, you know, the Super Regional Series here. 
I mean, not really. I'm just going to take it like any other game, you know, just go out there and do my thing. I'm just going to go out there, try to throw strikes, compete. They got a, a pretty elite lineup for the, in the country, so just try to keep them off balance, pitch to my strengths, and hopefully all the things go well. Obviously, this pitching staff has seen its injuries all year long. What did it mean to see Aiden Major make his return last weekend, come in there, give you almost five innings of relief, and just have Aiden hit back? Yeah, I mean, that was big time for us. Mage has kind of been on the aisle for a little bit, trying to get healthy, just trying to get his arm right. And to see that, I mean, gives us a lot of hope moving forward, especially having him in the back end of the bullpen. For him to come down and come into a game and keep us in it like that after a rough first inning was, was really nice to see. And, I mean, that's what you need in playoff baseball, just guys stepping up into those roles, giving us length, especially in a game like that where we were kind of short on, short on the staff. So, I mean, it was really, really big time performance from Mage. There, there's obviously, I mean, you talk about keeping hitters off balance, and you know, then you start looking at UNC stats and, and all the home runs, and it, it really kind of reminded me of Dallas Baptist with the home runs and the power numbers and stuff. Obviously, you did a great job against Dallas Baptist. How do you keep power hitters when it's like one through seven off balance? I mean, I can see if it was one or two guys, sure, not seven. I mean, yeah, I mean, just executing spots, you know, just trying not to make as many mistakes as as you possibly can. Um, their offense, they don't they don't miss mistakes. I mean, they're the number three or four team in the country for a reason. So if you don't make mistakes, I mean, you're going to put yourself in a great chance to win a ball game in the ninth. So just trying to execute spots, hitting corners, keeping them off balance with off speed stuff, so on, so on. We make a change in his plan in He's He's crazy. I mean, it just keeps, when he's loose, everybody else is loose. So, I mean, He's our leader for a reason, and we all follow him. So if he's playing like that, you're going to have Sam White and Cress and Chum doing it. I mean, we're just going to stay loose and just do our thing. Good. No problem. Since we're talking about Planet of the Apes, obviously I, I know you were getting in on that action with JJ last week. Just to have something like that for this team to just, you know, have that fun, rally around each other, just what's that like? It's awesome. I mean, I think towards the end of last year, like we started losing games, the attitude, everyone started getting down a little bit. So I think the whole Planet of the Apes thing, like everyone said, it just keeps us loose and we have fun. It's, it's a game for a reason. You might as well have fun while you're out there. So. Yeah. How good does a play have to be though before you're allowed to, you know, pull? I mean, you can't, an average grounder, you can maybe try it, right? It's, you're going to get. I mean, I'm not even making plays and I'm pounding my head. So <laughs> I think it's just, I think it's just uh, like when JJ made that sliding play in the, in the hole over there. Like, there was no I camera think. on me, but I was going ape crazy. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, yeah, I think it's just a great way to keep the guys on the Baseball comes up. Itself itself to that just because of the pace, the, the amount of downtown, things like that. There's a balance, I'm sure, to be struck. Has that ever been a problem for this team, or do you feel like you kept it in perspective when to have fun, but when to really lock in? I, I think it's tough to say. I mean, um, like, definitely, I remember after we lost to Marshall, yeah. that bus was dead I mean, that's kind of the time where probably just sit with your own thoughts and look yourself in the air a little bit, but I mean, like that Cincinnati weekend when we got off to a slow start on Sunday, just dead quiet, like no energy, like that's the time for sure, like even though you're out of the game, not out of the game, but even though you're down, like it's still a time where you need to keep energy up and keep the pace up, keep everything, all the, keep the vibes up, is what you like to say, but uh, yeah, I think, I think there's a time definitely where you need to kind of keep to yourself and learn, but when you're playing a game, it's a game for you to just have fun, no matter what the score is. And it feels like this team would not have achieved nearly as much as it has without that. Yeah, honestly. I mean, we started playing our best baseball a week ago, and the eight points started about a week and a half ago. So, yeah. <laughs> Along those lines, Sam, you guys had some good offense going in Tucson. What have you seen from the North Carolina pitchers, and how can we keep that going this weekend? The only pitcher I saw was the left-hander that closed against LSU on Monday. Um, other than that, I really I don't know what they bring, but again, they're top five team in the country, so I'm sure they got some good stuff. So then, regardless, what do you guys have to bring? Um, yeah, I mean, depending on what the pitch is like, I think you look for something elevated or you 
you just get a good pitch to hit. Um, last weekend, I think we did a great job of swinging strikes and taking the balls, like Mays always said. And I think we can do that in a good spot. Sam, do you think West Virginia is an underdog going into this, or do you take the philosophy of, <coughs> hey, we're all on the footing at this point? And is there anything to an underdog kind of mentality? I mean, I definitely think we, we are like the underdog. I don't think anyone in the whole country other than maybe West Virginia yeah. fans think we're going to win this series. But that's something that we're used to. And me personally, I know that any team can beat any team on any given day. That's what my dad always tells me. Um, and that's something I believe. I mean, it's a super regional and anything can happen. Oral Roberts beat OSU last year. Yeah, it. So, yeah. yeah, it was on the hot. Anything can happen. Okay. Yeah.